Hi everyone! Welcome to episode 60 of Unutilits. Hi friends! Welcome or welcome back to my channel Unutilits. My name is Annina and I come to come to you from the west coast of Finland where I live with my family, my two little boys and my husband and uh, this is a channel where I share all about my knitting and my knitwear designs. Let's get started today's business. I think I will have a little shorter episode today. Um, I just... <laughs> Got this idea that I need to film today because next week is already December and I am starting filming Vlogmas episodes. So I wanted to squeeze in a little regular podcast episode since it's been, I think it's been three weeks since my last episode. So um, I apologize if I'm rushing, but my kids went outside and I'm hoping they will stay there at least half an hour or so. I can film. It is a very bright and um, cold winter's day here in Finland. It is minus 8 degrees Celsius and we have a good 10 uh, centimeters of snow and um, I just came, um, I was taking pictures with my sister just, just um, re recently we, um, we took some pictures of my Yulgubbe socks. So I'm a little out of breath and I'm a little, um, I have little red cheeks, but yeah, that's winter in Finland. Um, I have five finished objects today, but I don't have two of them with me because I've already gifted them. And um, let's start. I'm wearing my uh, scrubby lento sweater. Uh, I have made this um it was last winter i don't remember if it was uh early this year or when whenever it was it uh, it is a scrappy lento with few different shades so there's there's few different shades of uh finchy pool and then an alpaca yarn as a second strand and this is my sweatshirt and the ultimate home sweater so I'm wearing wearing that. Lento is a sweater pattern by Jonna Hietala and it's a very popular raglan sweater pattern with the very large gates and um, very easy to modify. I think I modified my raglan increases to make one left and make one right rather than the ones that are in the pattern. Okay, so first two finished objects, two pairs of socks. Uh, I don't even have pictures of both of them. Um, I took this picture of uh, the first pair when I was making them and this is a pre-blocked and a blocked version. I gifted this uh, in Barcelona where I was last weekend with, with a bunch of friends and they went to Anastasia from Fria Sheep and um, there's nothing fancy about them. Uh, 64 stitches and um, I don't remember. I have pretty detailed uh, notes in my Ravelry. If you if you use Ravelry and that is accessible to you, you can have a look at my project pages about my socks. I usually put everything there. Uh, rounded toe, garter heel, and yeah, they were a gift to lovely Anastasia, and um, those those are already gone. And the second pair, I didn't remember to take pictures of them, but I used the same same yarn than in these socks, except that I had a green contrast color. So I did a green cuff and green heel, but this same same um, color. And the same thing, 64 stitches and so forth. So those were gift socks. Uh, the second pair went to Cam uh, Camilla. Uh, she is a... Uh, Yarn dyer in Denmark, and she is a uh, camijonet, and um, she got that second pair of finished socks. And then 
Um, I will be talking about my Barcelona trip. Uh, I went to Barcelona Nets um, last weekend, as I said, and I will be talking about that at the end of this episode. So if you are not interested in hearing about my Barcelona trip and my yarn acquisitions, that will be towards the end of the episode. So I will go through my finished objects and then um, we will go go and talk about uh, Barcelona a bit. Okay, um, I finally finished the pair for my Julgubbe socks. They are damp and there's still some snow in it. I don't know how much you can see. It's pretty bright and then, you know, filming in <laughs> Filming in November in Finland is sometimes a bit tricky, but anyhow. My Yulgupe socks, they have this Santa Clauses and little bubbles for the hats, a stranded color work leg and some easy lie stitch pattern um, on the foot. And this pattern, it will be released on the 1st of December. So next Friday, um, I think I will post a community post here on YouTube as well. But you can follow my Instagram and you will be uh, seeing when the pattern goes live. But yeah, the release date is 1st of December. And therefore you have time to make your own Christmas socks before Christmas. I just love these bubbles. I can't get over them. So cute. <laughs> and uh, they are fun and festive. And then there is this gusset decreases on the bottom of the foot. So it's a little bit, uh, not unusual, but it's a bit different way of decreasing. Um, I didn't want the, the gusset decreases on the side of the foot. I wanted the clean, clean uh, portion there. And then I did, did a little decreased triangle here under the foot. These socks are made with um, the Fiberco Amble yarn, which is an alpaca and merino sock yarn. And this yarn was kindly gifted for this design. I did talk about that last time. And they will be offering kits with the pattern and and this yarn. And um, you can also buy the pattern, uh, only the pattern from me, because this is, this is my own. Uh, so I have the rights for this pattern and they will just be selling, selling kits as a collaboration with me. I can't remember the colorways. I know that the red one is Appleby Castle but um, I will write them here so you can take a look. There is uh, three different shades and then I just used black sock yarn uh, for the eyes. So just a scrap and that could be also another color, whatever color you would like your um, Santas to have for the eyes. But those were my Christmas socks and then I finished uh, the cowl that I showed you last time, my coastland cowl, uh, the green version. So this is the this is the lace. So it's the same lace than in my coastland shawl, but this is made with a bigger gauge. And this is now the smaller, smaller size for, for this. I don't know how much you can see up of a picture. I, I took it uh, with me yesterday. My husband snapped a few photos when we were um, out in the woods. And um, this was originally meant for, for a Christmas gift, but 
I can't part ways with it. So I'm keeping it. I'm keeping it for myself. It's a beautiful merino. And this yarn dyer got on my eyes. It's not dyeing yarn anymore. So I can't get a hold of this color anymore. So I will keep this for myself and I'll gift something else. This pattern uh, was already in testing, but I'm not publishing it this year. I decided I will postpone um, postpone this uh, release because I just I wanted a little bit uh, more relaxed end of the year for myself, and I don't think pushing patterns out like on a tight schedule is is something that I would enjoy. And I will really like to take time with my, my kids. Uh, now Christmas time is approaching and um, I think this can wait. And uh, I still need to do the translation. Um, I did run out of yarn when I was doing it. Maybe you can see here. So I, I actually had... My Payu Pullover cream sample is the same colorway. It's a tweed yarn uh, merino. Uh, I held it double because the, the other one was a DK wool. And I striped a few few rounds and then I was taking out the nips as I went. So the last, uh, I used nine grams of that fingering weight yarn. You can probably tell but because it's the same colorway, it's on the back of my neck. Nobody will see it. It's fine. But uh, yeah, I uh, I need to... I think I'm going to make another sample with worsted weight yarn. And so maybe I will get a more... Because one skein of DK is not enough. So you, you will need approximately... 120, 115 grams, and that's annoying. <laughs> so I'll be using worsted weight yarn and use one and a half balls or something like that. But I will be making another sample of these, but it's a great gift knit. And even though I'm not gifting this one or I'm not planning on making for this Christmas any more of those, but I can always put it in a box and gift it another year if I don't need one right now. And those were my, um, no, I still have one more finished object. And where did I put it? Here. Um, I showed last time socks that I made for my nephew. And now I made something for her, for his sister. And these are some slippers that I made um, for my niece. There is this lovely little cable detail in the front. How can I show it? So that's on the top of your foot and it's a very quick and easy project. Um, this is a pattern by Yuki Knits, uh, uh, Faye Kennington. And um, this pattern comes in uh, four sizes, I believe from small to ex extra large and I was just trying out uh, because I knew knew that I have different sized feet <laughs> so I can I can give them uh, to anyone uh, who they might fit so I used drops air with a strand of Novita Nalle which is a sock yarn uh, sport weight sock yarn I used the recommended needle size, which is six millimeter, and I didn't get gauge, not even close. So this is supposed to be, this is a adult medium size, which is not clearly. I think this is something like European 30 to 32. And um, I actually used some silk mohair as an addition for the sole. Uh, I thought that it will give a little bit more durability because Drops Air is a blown yarn, and I don't know if that works in socks or slippers too well. Even though there's a strand of sock yarn, I I wanted to reinforce the sole of the foot. But I made these, and I will give these to my niece. 
and those were all my finished objects but as we are in the subject of mine slippers i did make another one as well so this time i used um uh, topsy farms worsted which is a canadian farm yarn and i did uh hold a strand of rauma vandre i think i got that from inga uh, when she, when we had a yarn swap inga from the knitting traditions she sent me a, uh, a skein of of that and that's um is it a dk or a sport it might be dk and this time i used seven millimeter needles and with those two yarns i got gauge so it's supposed to be like a 14 stitch gauge and this is one slipper done and the second one i have started this is a mess here where i'm at so i just started um the cuff and it's a pretty simple pattern even the cable bit um the lighting is now it's a bit odd because it comes from the side but i i actually memorized the whole pattern i didn't have to i made two slippers uh these gray ones and i knew the pattern the third one i did without i did modify that this um, adult size slipper because i thought this kind of heel it's very pointy so when you put your heel in it has this little corner here so what i did i decreased two stitches um so four stitches on uh, two different rounds no two stitches in the beginning and in the end of the round so as you would do like does it increases or decreases and i did them on the first and second knit row on the sole i should have done it i think like in the corner maybe so next time i'm making this pattern i will do it a little further down so this part would be straight and there i would decrease but i think it made the fit better and i am planning on making more because this is a very very quick quick knit you can do one in uh i don't know two hours one and a half hour um so it's a very quick knit i think this color combination is fabulous it's marled it's green it's earthy and i love it so yeah this is what i've been doing and i'm planning on doing more there's a loose stitch over there i need to tighten it up um i don't necessarily like knitting on seven millimeter needles it's quite chunky and you don't uh, you can't really knit a long time with them, but I think these little quick uh, gift knits are just wonderful, wonderful projects to, to do uh, on chunky needles because they are fast and uh, it's like a very, um, what's the word, like a instant gratification kind of a project. I remembered that I didn't take two of my projects here. But I will show you one more and then I will quickly grab those two. Um, I was being a bad test knitter. Um, my recovery from my uh, surgery didn't go as well as I was hoping it would. So it took me a little bit more time to actually rest and not knit. And I was asked to be in the test for the Stella quilt cushion which is here. This is a pattern by Laura Pendrose from Pendrose Knits and this is now already out. So you can go and grab your own copy if you like. Um, I have already, I, I have started the, the backing, but I'm just one corner in and I didn't manage. I didn't manage to finish this on time. It was released uh, on Friday, so two days ago, and it's a fantastic pattern. I can highly, highly recommend it. 
I did talk about that in my previous episode. So if you want to hear more about it, you can go and um, have a look at there because I'm on a time strain and and uh, yeah. Anywho, two more works in progress, but I need to get them. One second. These were my travel projects and um, I was traveling to Barcelona and it took a while to get there. I had my coastland shawl, um, but I didn't quite make as much progress that I thought I would. Let's see here. So here, here is the marker where I was before my trip. I made four repeats. They are still quite long rows. Uh, it doesn't quite stretch to my cable yet. <laughs> it's very long. And it's all... It's all wrinkly because it has been... Um, squished down or squished down in my in my luggage but yeah I did manage to do a little bit but not not as much as I was thinking I might but that was the reason or that the reason is that I actually didn't knit um, during my time in Barcelona a lot I was just enjoying my time with my friends and that didn't include knitting all the time so we had dinners and all that and we didn't knit while we were at at the restaurants or or those places uh on my way back i had a 14 hour 14 hour travel time i took a uh, a flight to london to heathrow while i well, it was, a, it was a schedule thing. Uh, when I came to Barcelona, I flew from Helsinki to Barcelona. So I took a connection, connecting flight from my city to Helsinki and then to Barcelona. So that was like, I don't know. I had a two hour or two and a half hour layover in Helsinki. I left at 12 o'clock. Uh, and I was there eight o'clock in the evening. So it didn't take me all day, but coming back, I was traveling for 14 hours. I flew to Heathrow and that flight was an hour uh, delayed. So I had to, I had to run through or rush through Heathrow and security. And I don't know, they just, think that I'm the most dangerous person in the world because I get stopped every time. I get the swab tests and uh, at Heathrow, they just selected a few of us and they asked me to take my shoes off and, you know, stand in the tube and <laughs> all that jazz. Um, in the end, I didn't have time to eat. I was just running through Heathrow from first I had to change terminals and then after changing terminals, I had to run from gate 42 to gate number three. So if you know Heathrow and the size of it, it took me a while. But I was on time and I got to my connection. And yeah, so I got a little bit sidetracked. <laughs> um, I managed to make these in the 14 hour travel time. So these are my Lotus Lake socks. So it's a pattern of mine. And I just made two at a time. And I managed to finish the lace uh, while I was traveling. So on the plane, I had actually printed out the lace chart. So it's easier for me to keep it there and not have my phone out. Um, and yeah, now it's smooth sailing from now on. It's going to be a three by one ribbing. And um, I'm using a yarn from the same dyer who doesn't dye anymore, Karma Yarns, and this is her PFL sock. 
and I don't remember the name, it was something rose something. It's a beautiful variegated variegated color. I was actually thinking maybe it's not the best for, for a lace pattern, but when you stretch it out, you can see the lace fine. It's just when it's scrunched up, you can't really see anything. And those, those were all my works in progress and my finished objects. I have a few little acquisitions, few, from Barcelona. Um, but I want to talk about a little, little bit about the trip before, before I go into my acquisitions. Um, I had just such a lovely time with my friends. Uh, we've been connecting through an Instagram chat for two years now. There's a group of podcasters and the ones that I met were um, Selma from Little Big Knits and Lisa from and so on, Camilla uh, or Camilla from Camijo Knits and Ivana from the Republic of Me. And then we met Anastasia also uh, on Saturday and we got to hang out with her. We had dinner and then we, we went went um, for a few drinks as well. Uh, me and Selma were sharing a hotel room and um, it was so lovely to meet everyone. And Camilla and um, Ivana had also their husbands with us. So they were very brave. <laughs> with us the whole whole time in the knitting festival and it was just so 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 wonderful the knitting festival itself was quite busy um we went there on a saturday morning i think we went around 11 started at 10 and we queued for like an hour it was it was so much people um i will put some clips after i talk and then you can see a little bit, a little bit how it went. But there was a lot of people, a lot of vendors, and it was a little bit overwhelming. It was in two different rooms. We queued for the first one for an hour. And then there was just like a line of backs in each, um, on each um, table where the, the yarn companies were. So... As a short person, a short pe person, it's not very pleasant to have, you know, a lot of crowd. But I think we ran through the first one. Um, I did purchase. I will give this here, like as they happen, so you can see also some of the things that I purchased. Uh, one of the first stalls were dark omen yarns. He's an Italian dyer. And he had such beautiful colors and we fell in love. Like we were hurtled around her, his table. And this was the first thing that I bought. Um, I bought three skeins of this uh, to make a sweater, like a fingering weight sweater. And Selma took a picture of me wearing a shawl that they had there. I opted for a little bit more muted this time. And um, yeah, this was the first thing that I bought and the first thing or the only thing that I bought as we were going through the first room. Then we went to the second room and so much people. Um, I think it took us so much time to queue that Selma had already organized this meet and greet. So she went there and we didn't spend too much time browsing around because then we just wanted to eat something and sit down and knit. So we went to the nearby hotel and we had some lunch and had some knitting time as well. But it was a little bit overwhel overwhelming, but we had a whole weekend uh, response. So we knew that we can go back whenever we want. All in all, my trip to Barcelona was amazing. Uh, we went to see... Um, Sagrada Familia, also the church, and that was on a Sunday. And then I went back to the festival um, with Selma. And um, 
I don't know. We just had such a beautiful time there. And now I will show you the things that I got. I think my kids want to come in. So this is my cue for speeding it up. And I will just quickly show you what I got. And then I will wrap things up. Uh, I wanted a memorabilia or a souvenir from the Barcelona Knits event. So I took this um, or I bought the sock bag and Camilla got us all these um, pins. Everything is very wrinkled because maybe I'll put a picture of my suitcase here. I just had a carry on bag and oh, I, I didn't take a lot of clothes because I knew that I don't need a lot. And, um, yeah, I ended up filling my suitcase with yarn. So I bought, um, I don't know how to say this, Pastoretta. I don't know the, the brand name is very hard to say. Soya, I don't know how to say it. It's a, this is a, um, space, a breed specific, a uh, non superfluous fingering weight yarn so it's a spanish yarn it's pretty rustic uh, but it feels nice and the colors were amazing i opted for the green one i think it's so nice foresty green so i i bought a sweater quantity of this and then <laughs> the wool trimmers so i bought the um manchalopes and i bought this for a cardigan that i have in my head uh it's a design idea that i have i'm eager to get swatching with it it's so soft it's like so soft i have only tried like plotulopi and uh, a finish finish unspun and this is just beautiful it has lived different shapes in it beautiful oranges a little bit of hint of yellow hint of red and i bought these buttons to go these buttons to go with it Oh, they are French handmade buttons and they were so beautiful and they go perfectly with this. So I have a sweaters quantity of, of that as well. So I did buy three sweater quantities and then I had some gifts. Um, Selma was so kind, she brought us all a different skein of Sunday yarn, Sunday morning. And well, you can see how well it matches my colors. And this is, I'm so excited to get, get to try this out. It also feels very, very soft. BFL mash, Masham. Camilla bought us all, sorry, wrinkle, wrinkle, wrinkle. Camilla has made these bird of the month um, colorways and she brought us all bird of the month of November which is this it's the robin so beautiful all my favorite colors I can't really show it properly here the, the lighting is not great but this is what I got from Camila and finally one more thing this was a a last minute purchase i think i bought this uh on the sunday when we went there this is actually an argentinian um merino they were quite cheap uh i bought two skeins of this worsted weight merino here's the label whoop and I want to make a little squishy hat out of it. And I bought two just in case because I didn't want to run out because it was, it was such a sweet vendor, vendor and this felt very squishy and it was only 10 euros a ball, so or skein. And that's that. I need to wrap things up. I need to <laughs> let my family come in. So um, I will put some clips at the end i actually i forgot to film most of the time i had so much fun uh that i just didn't i just didn't take my phone out and i think that's a good sign because we just had the 
most amazing time together. We were laughing constantly and it felt like we've known each other forever. Uh, that was the first time we met uh, in person, except I have met Selma before, but um, it was like, you know, friends that we've always, uh, or friends that have always known each other. And I thoroughly enjoyed spending some time also alone uh, to travel by myself. It was a very, very good thing to do by myself. I've been, I haven't traveled for seven years by myself uh, or I haven't left the country in seven years uh, since I had children. So it felt so good. I was so happy. This week has been quite rough. Um, I only slept for four hours uh, before I had to go to work, but this weekend has been relaxed and um, yeah. I I'm happy and um, I will I will uh, continue filming uh, next week when I start my vlogmas and I will do I think two episodes uh, or two days in one episode so I will post maybe 12 videos um, next month but those will be a little bit different kind of videos they are not going to be sit down and talk videos so I hope you enjoy that and if you have anything to question any any questions at all or if you just want to leave me a comment then you're very welcome to do so i'm so happy you watch until the end and i will see you next time happy day.